you sink the profits into Bitcoin. There's Arn. Arnie's in the house. All right, that's good news. He's back. He's interested. He must have known that we were going to be talking about Marathon today. So Marathon, mm, probably not our favorite company. And we've talked about that the last little while here. But this is pretty big. Uh, what the heck's going on here? There we go. Just in from Bitcoin News. Oh, we didn't do the Bitcoin well yet. Fuck. Get too much in these shows nowadays. Bitcoin News. Just in Marathon plans to sell $250 million in convertible debt notes to buy more Bitcoin for the Treasury. According to CEO Fred Thiel. So Marathon is a Bitcoin miner. They're a mining company. That's what they do. That's where their efforts are. But you can see here that they're, they're taking a page out of MicroStrategy playbook and offering convertible notes to buy more Bitcoin for the treasury, which I think is brilliant. I think it's brilliant. And we're going to just put this on pause for a second. We're going to look at the updated version of this, which is also from Bitcoin News. Marathon's 250 million convertible note offering intended to fund additional Bitcoin purchases has been oversubscribed and increased by an additional $50 million. So they went from 250, they oversold it. Now they're doing 300 million, or no, yeah, 300 million worth of Bitcoin to put on their, their treasury. Is there, are things working here? looks like my internet, oh, there we go. So Marathon, smart. Why are they doing this right now? Well, to me, I don't think they're going to change their whole business model to be like a micro strategy. That doesn't make any sense. They have all this infrastructure in place. They have all these electricity contracts, energy contracts. They're, 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 this is a smart move for Marathon. And the reason why this is smart is because they know what's coming here. They know what's coming in the next 12 months. They're not idiots. They've suffered through the last four years of mining. And they know that any sort of Bitcoin on their balance sheet right now is going to be worth a hell of a lot more in a year from now. They know that. They're not dummies. They're, they're in deeper than most within Bitcoin here. And so what this, what this allows for is that with these different mining pools, Marathon is a mining pool. And so you can plug into the, the mining pools. Uh, and one of the one of the major concerns that Bitcoiners have had for the last couple of months is the centralization of mining pools. And the reason why some of these mining pools like Antpool, F2 Pool, who else was on there? Foundry. The reason why a lot of these mining companies uh, have been able to or have been forced essentially to centralize is because they don't have enough Bitcoin in their balance sheet. So a lot, how a lot of these pools work, uh, I'm going to, let's just take a little break here because this is kind of difficult to ex explain and understand, I think, if I don't do it properly. So these, these mining pools, when you hook up to a mining pool, you essentially have two options, and I forget what they're called. They're two acronyms. But one of them, and we'll use Ocean for an example here. If I was to point my bid axe, my hash power of my bid axe towards Ocean Pool, this is how they do it. So they, you plug in your hash, and let's say that I have like one one thousandth of the hash power for Ocean. So every time Ocean hits a block, they pay out to everybody who is providing hash to their mining pool, which makes sense. Right. It's it's not preferred as like a miner because then you actually have to wait for ocean to hit a block before you actually get paid by them. But that's how they do it. On the flip side of that, if you look at like a, an ant pool, if I plug my hash rate into the ant pool mining pool, it doesn't matter if they hit a block. They're they have consistent payouts. So let's say every week they send uh they would send me a payment for one one thousandth of their hash divided by how much the average return would be over that. 
It makes sense. It's prorated based on how much you contribute. That's how much you get back, very simply. But there's two paths there. So one is based strictly on results, like the ocean pool. So if, if they go six months without hitting a block, you don't get paid at all. But then the other way, which a lot of people prefer, is you get a consistent payout. Even if F2 pool isn't hitting blocks, they still have enough Bitcoin on their treasury to make those payments to their the people who are contributing hash or energy to their pool. So for Marathon to go out and put a whole bunch of Bitcoin on their treasury, obviously they're trying to get more people to connect to their mining pool. Um, so they'll have much, and they can do the consistent payouts regardless of whether they're hitting blocks or not, because that's the, the dangerous part about that is if you commit to paying all of your miners, your pool miners every two weeks, and you don't hit any blocks during those two weeks, you have to have a backup there. You have to have Bitcoin on treasury in order to make those payments. And the reason why a lot of these pools have actually hooked up to Ant pool now and F2 pool is because they didn't have enough in their treasury. So then they have to use Ant pool and F2 pool as a proxy essentially uh, to keep their operations going. So by Marathon um, putting Bitcoin on their treasury, it just strengthens their ability to continue operations without having to rely on the big boys. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So Marathon, they're raising debt uh, to buy more Bitcoin. I think it's a very good strategy for that reason. Plus, they know what's going to happen in the next 12 months. And uh, smart. We criticize Marathon a lot on the show, <laughs> mostly because they're mining Caspa. That was, that was the one for me that really turned me off of Marathon. But uh, that's that's a smart play. We got to give credit where credit is due. <laughs> 